Hello, and thank you for joining me for our church school lesson on today. And we have another great lesson, but will you allow me just a moment to ask God's blessing on this lesson on tonight? Dear Lord, here we are once again getting ready to share your word with others. Lord, I pray and ask that you will give us all listening ears and receiving hearts so that we might be able to take this lesson and share it with others. And Lord, we ask a special blessing on the bereaved and the sick everywhere, Lord. Lord, forgive us all of our sins. Bless this nation, bless this world, bless this city, Lord. We need your guidance. And Lord, we want to say thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's my turn and we're back. And it looks like I got a few uh, viewers. Hello, Irene. Hello, Jackie. Uh, Sister Ridgeway. Sister uh, Renee So Spicy, I see you. Sister uh, Willie Mae Brazil, good to have you. Oh, hello, Robert Baldwin, good to have you. You were great last week. And as we go on and get started on this lesson, because I want to, I don't want to hold you too long, but we have another great lesson. And this is, let's uh, flip over so we can see where we're studying for those that don't have a book. And as you see, we are still in unit one by the work, by his works. We're studying from lesson number three, and we're using the Union Gospel Press book. Our topic or uh, our subject for tonight's lesson is doing the Father's work. The time is A.D. 28, and the place is Jerusalem. And our lesson is coming from John, the fifth chapter, verse 19 through 28. And our lesson, I've chosen the New Living Translation, but we will refer back to the King James off and on. All right. Now, our golden text comes from John, that fifth chapter, verse 24, and it reads, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. And as we see, we have two outlines. Our first outline is the Father and the Son. And that's coming out of verses 19 through 23. And the second outline, the people and the son from John 5, 24 through 29. As you can see, we're starting this lesson. We're almost picking up where uh, our lesson ended last week. But as we get into this lesson and see, uh, it was a great uh idea a great opportunity for me to see just how Jesus was perceived by the Jewish leaders and that they really had it in for him. They were really jealous of him because they wanted him to abide by the laws of the Old Testament as if he didn't know the laws and that they were really jealous because we know that when we are in a position and others that seem to think that they're in a higher position than us, they will critique us and find fault of us. But as we will see in this lesson, not only did they critique Jesus, but they wanted to kill him. Now, isn't that something? These are the, the religious people. These are the ones that knew the Old Testament and the laws and the book of Moses and they knew that the Messiah was coming because they had prayed and asked for a Messiah. And when the Messiah is here, we're going to see how they mistreated him. Like so many times, we know people that if we get a little position, they will mistreat us and criticize us because really it boils down to jealousy. They feel like we're, we're making ourselves better than what we really are. 
But in this case, it was the Jewish leaders, not just the everyday people, but we all know those who've had jobs and we've held a position and we were promoted up. It wasn't so much the ones who we were promoted from among, but the ones who were already at the top that don't, that didn't care for us or didn't like us. Anybody out there agree with me? Hello, Jackie Smith, Brother Walker, good to have you. Sister Ruby Baldwin, my big sis, good to have you. If I miss from seeing your name, forgive me. I'm going to try to make this short. So now, let's look at our first outline. And this outline is giving reference to the Father and the Son. This, is a, oh, this was an amazement for me to see just how close God and Jesus really was. So let's read our scriptures. And again, this is the New Living Translation. And verse 19. So Jesus explained. Now remember, he's talking to the Jewish leaders. He's not talking to just regular people that he's, at, like John the Baptist was saying, repent, repent. No, these are the top-notch, so say, scholarly people. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the, for the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the Father will show him how to do even greater things than healing this man. Then you will truly be astonished. For, verse 21, for just as the Father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone he wants. And in verse 22, in addition, the Father judges no one. Instead, he has given the Son absolute authority to judge. Verse 23, so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son is certainly not honoring the Father who sent him. Now, as we see, this is Jesus uh, talking to the Jewish leaders. Because if you go back and read from chapter, uh, from verse 1 up until this, where our lesson begins, he had just healed the man that was sitting by the pool of Bethesda. So we know what went on there. And when Jesus told the man, he asked him, did he want to? Now remember, they're looking around. People are seeing this because it was a crowd of people. And he asked the man, did he want to be saved? And of course the man, hey, look, uh, Jesus, I've been sitting here all this time. I'm crippled. Yeah, I want to be saved. Hello, Patsy. Good to have you, baby. And they, uh, so when he told him to pick up his bed, the man got up and did exactly that and went in and was telling people. They saw him and they were questioning the Jewish leaders. Now get this. They were questioning the man that had been healed about uh, you picked up your bed. They were they were nitpicking everything. Well, who? why would you pick up your bed? You know, it's a sin. The day is the Sabbath. See, they want to rewrite the laws that fit according to what their purpose was. Anybody out there? know what I'm talking about, how they do that, and hello, Deacon Randall, how people will change it to fit. They, they do that today, y'all. They take scriptures and re rearrange them to fit what they want it to, to mean and not what the purpose it was given for. So the 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 crippled man, he, he didn't even ask. He forgot who, he didn't know who healed. He didn't know the man's name. So as he went about and he saw him, he, he went back and told the Jewish leaders, Jesus healed me. Well, this is where our lesson comes in, and they are questioning Jesus about doing this work on the Sabbath, because you weren't supposed to do no work on the Sabbath. But then as we see in that verse 19, Jesus, look how it says, it says, and so Jesus explained. He went to, Jesus did not back down. He let them know exactly what the truth is. He says, I tell you the truth. And then it says, in other words, he's letting know, I'm not lying to you all. He says, the son can do nothing without, by, nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father do. 
And then he says, look, he says, whatever the father does, the son does also. How many brothers out there that learn how to do things by looking at your father? I know a lot of us women, those who really wanted to be in the kitchen, we learned how to cook a meal by watching what mama was doing. And the men learned how to do mechanical things or mow the lawn or wash the car because as they were little, they observed their father and they would do exactly what the father was doing. And this is what Jesus is telling them. He's telling them the son can only do what the father is doing. So this is what he's saying. He says, for the father loves the son. How many of our parents, they loved us so much that they showed us things of how to be uh, uh, ladies, come on, back me up. Our mamas or our grandmothers, our aunties, whoever raised you, showed you how a woman should care for herself and how she should care for her children. They showed you this. Men, come on, your daddy showed you how to be a man. He didn't teach you how to, he didn't show you how to wimp out and run off and don't want to do nothing. Come on, amen, Patsy. Thank you, my sister. Come on, there are things that our parents, if we didn't have our parents growing up, there was a grandmother or there was an aunt. It might have been a neighbor, who knows? But they taught us how to do things. And this is what Jesus is telling these leaders. He says, for the father loves his son. Don't you know that as a parent, we love our children and we want to guide them in the right direction. We want them to live a full life and productive. So we teach them when they're little. Even after they get grown, uh, 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 Renee, there are certain things that we still have to show in front of them. Even though they're adults and we are grandparents, we still have to show them how to discipline and how to go on with this. Well, this is what Jesus was telling these uh, big time Jewish leaders. <laughs> I like to say that, that he letting them know the father shows him everything. Him, they, what they did not realize was that God and Jesus were equal together. They were one, even God sent his son. Where you think Jesus came from? From the father. That's why that he showed him everything. He says the father will show, you, show him how to do even greater works. They didn't like that. That, that, come on somebody, that, that got on their nerve again because they felt like, oh, he's boasting. Now he thinks he's better than, he's going to be better than God. But that's not what he's saying. And then as we look and look down where he says, he, he talks about in that uh, uh, verse 1, verse 21, he says, For just as the Father gives life to those he raised from the dead, so the Son will give life to anyone he wants to. See, now they, they still calculating in their head, Oh, well, he's, going, he's putting himself better than the Father. He's saying that he's going to do better than God. Listen to what Jesus is trying to tell them. He's trying to let them, the works that I'm doing, I've seen my Father do. And my Father has given me this ability to do this. Because we're going to see that even down further, he can't do anything without the Father being in him and he in, and they are, are together. He says, he says, he says, because the son will give life also. They didn't like that. They believe that God is the creator of everything and only God can give life. They cannot, they cannot see him talking about, and the son gives life to anyone he wants. They didn't like that because see, they couldn't give life to whoever they wanted. They believed in God, but y'all, they didn't believe in Jesus. And then it says, in addition, the father judges no one. Instead, he has given the son. Y'all see this? Absolute authority to judge. Now, that's verse 22. Jesus told these Jewish leaders that the father had given him authority to judge all things. God gave that to Jesus. Now, that didn't mean God resigned his position and sat back and did nothing. No, no, God was the creator of all things. It says, and, and he let him, let them, he said, God gave me authority to judge all things. Now, when Jesus said this, 
uh, it does not mean, like I said, that God had stepped back and resigned his righteous judgment. No, but he, but he is pleased. He's so proud of his son that he would let him govern. He let him govern and judge by, he did this through Christ Jesus. In other words, God hadn't, God hadn't went away and disappeared. No, you all, they're working together. Jesus don't do nothing without the God, the Father's approval. He already said, whatever he saw his father, whatever he saw his daddy doing, uh, 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 Reuben, that means God had given him the authority to do that. He gave that to him. He didn't give that to the Jewish leaders. No, this is what he gave me. And look, look at our verse 23, where it says, so that everyone, now get this, now, if these Jewish leaders believed in God as they pretended they did, then look, he says, so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. See, they were jealous of Jesus. They were not giving him no honor. As a matter of fact, like I told you, they wanted to kill him because he was drawing crowds and people was, he was doing things that they had never seen a human being do. So, this is, hello, Sister Irvin, good to have you. So here we see, so that everyone will honor the Son. Do y'all see that? That means me and you. We've got to honor Jesus Christ. If we don't honor Jesus, we can't honor God because they are uniquely, they are equally joined together. How you gonna love God and not love his Son? It's just like saying, how can you... How can you love God and hate your brother who you see all the time where we've never seen? We come through this through a spiritual acceptance. Our hearts and minds have a, come to an agreement that, yes, we believe in God and his son is Jesus Christ. And then he says, just as they honor the father, anyone who does not honor the son, do y'all see that? Is certainly not honoring the father who sent him. It's, it, it's no way my son can say he's the son of, of his father, but he have, and then his son, if he had a son, would say, well, I don't believe in, in your daddy, but uh, I, I honor your daddy, but I don't honor you. No, that's not how it works. You have to honor. If I honor God, I must honor Jesus Christ because Christ is the one that when he brought us salvation, that does not mean that God is still not in control. Yes, he is, because we're going to see before we get to the Easter uh, celebration that even Jesus still honored his father. And as we can see in that verse 22, in, in God's great design is for Jesus Christ to receive the same honor, I said that, that men give to the Father. He deserves this. God wants us to honor his son. It is important that people recognize Jesus equally with his Father and his authority to judge. You can't, these Jewish people want to say, who gave him authority? Well, who are you talking to? You're not talking to just any other human being. This is a special God given God's son who put on a human body and walked around in human flesh. So now that's the father and the son. Jesus was trying to emphasize this, that you can't say you love God and hate his son. No, they are one. They are the same. And it, it wasn't robbery that God, that Jesus said that him and his father are the same because it's the truth. He sent his son here, you all. He did not. He did not come to become ruler over, over God. No, God sent him here to save us. He gave that authority to Jesus Christ. And that's what he's trying to get these, uh, these religious folks, these folks that know, supposed to be so close to God and know everything. So listen, you all, be careful who you follow. If they put themselves above Jesus Christ, or uh, they sit up and say like the last president that he was the he was the second coming. Run from them kind of people. Run, run, run. Because God already has a, his plan is working right now 
for all of us to honor his son as well as honor him because there is going to be a reward for those of us that have honored the son and that reward is not about money it's not about clothes or flat or fashion or big houses it is about eternal life and that's what we ought to be thriving for okay now let's Move on to our second outline. I got to watch my time. And as we see, now we're talking about G the people and the son. Because remember, these these uh, Jewish leaders are still, they, they, they just flat out don't like our Savior, y'all. They wanted him dead, but they didn't have that power. Okay, let's read our last scriptures. And this is the New Living Translation. And it says, verse 24, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. Y'all see that? Have, not gonna have, have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed death from death unto life. Verse 25, as I assure you, that the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and who, and those who listen will live. 26, the Father has life in himself, and he has granted that same life-giving power to his Son, not the Jewish leaders. Verse 27, and he has given him authority to judge everyone because what? He is the son of man. Don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's son and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life. And those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. Isn't this something? This this what really opened my eyes and, and made gave me a better understanding when he talks about that when at first he says, I tell you the truth. He says, those who listen to my message, this is Jesus talking. He says, my message and believe. In other words, if you hear the word of God, I don't care who's preaching it, I don't care who's teaching it, but if the true word of God is being spoken and you believe in your heart what this word says, guess what? You have eternal life because the Son is bringing this message to them and the Son is making it all, is giving will give his life so that we all can have this salvation and have eternal life. He says they will be, he says they will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Now here he's talking about when you receive Jesus Christ and you believe in him and you accept him and you have salvation, guess what? He's talking about when he says when you are passed from death unto life, you were walking around spiritually dead. But when you receive that in your heart and you ask God to forgive you, says, Lord, I believe I want to I wanna be made whole. And I, I believe this. Guess what? You have been spiritually, you were dead before you started believing because you're walking around in sin. But when you heard the word and it penetrated your heart, guess what? You have been made whole and you have been brought from uh, a spiritual death to uh, to life now. And then he says, and he told him, he says, and I assure you uh, that th the time is coming. He's letting them know. You think that me healing this man by the pool was, all, was, was such a great time? He said, indeed. He said, indeed it is now when the dead will hear my voice. You hear this? The dead. The, the voice of the Son of God and those who listen will live. Now, what he's talking about, that those that have died in Christ and they had accepted Christ as their Savior, when they hear his voice in that final resurrection, 
those people, they going to know Jesus' voice because they have, came, they have come acquainted with his words. And he said, and, and they listen. When you hear something and you listen, you change. That's what he's talking about here. He says, the Father has life in himself. The creator of all things has life in himself. And he has granted that same life-giving power to his son. In other words, God created everything. There was nothing that he created. The son, he's given him that same power that he can give. Jesus can raise you from the dead in your sinful life right now, walking around dead to the fact that Christ died for us. Don't you know God can, God, God allowed Jesus to raise you from that spiritual dead life? He says, look, he says, and he has given him authority to judge everyone because he is the son of man. Now this son of man, Jesus started calling himself that because see, that's because Jesus was here as a human being to be the son of man, to bring us all in together. And that's what he's talking about, that, that son of man. But in verse 24, it says, Anyone who hears God's words and believe in God who sent him, y'all see that, will be guaranteed eternal life. Uh, 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 Inez Willis, I, I believe him. I believe him because my life has been a struggle. And I know that I believe in God, that there is another life waiting that I'm going to live where I won't have sickness. I won't be short of money. I won't be worried about my child going to jail. I'm going to have eternal life with God and the Son. He says, this means that, and then when the judgment comes, I escape that. I don't have to be condemned because I've already asked for forgiveness and the Lord has given it to me. He says, uh, 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 judgment, he says, we must believe in Jesus Christ and the one who sent him. We can't believe in, in God and not believe in Jesus Christ. And that's what that's talking about. He says, and he, he went on to tell him how he's given, uh, God, God had gave him authority. Jesus is really bragging to these folks, y'all. <laughs> I can see why some of them would probably go, who we think he is? You know how we, come on, Randall, you know how we do people. When we, we've been knowing them from way back, we don't realize they done been converted. And then they coming around, they trying to, they trying to help those that are lost. And we think, where did he come from? I remember this. No, don't look at remember when. Look at right now. God has saved you. He has you accepted his son, Jesus Christ. Don't you know you are going to have eternal life? You won't be condemned. You won't be judged because you believed in your heart and you corrected your ways. I didn't say you were perfect, but you're continually correcting your ways. And then when he says, look, he says, don't be surprised. Indeed, there's a time coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God. Now, y'all, this is what got me. And I'm thinking, oh, wait, we're talking about, now we're talking about uh, 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 the resurrection. Now, he just said those that hear his voice will live again. Now, he was talking about those that were spiritually dead. Now, we're talking about the physical dead. All our loved ones, all those that we know are, 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 that are in the grave, I pray even today that they soul was right with Jesus because when he in that resurrection time, there are going to be two resurrections going on. First, the ones that believed in Jesus, they are going to get up. They are going to rise up and go on and won't have to face condemnation because they believed in what they they believe and they follow. It wasn't based on their works. No, it's what they believed. They believed and honored God and his son. Where in that second one, look where it says, it says, and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life. But now get this, those who have continued in evil will rise to experience uh, judgment. That is, He's going to call, when we hear his voice, those of us that have died in Christ, we're going to get up first, and we're going to have uh, 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 eternal life. We won't have to uh, be judged and condemned, whereas this second group, those that are dead, and when he wakes them up, 
and bring them, guess what? Those, that's that second resurrection involves those who were unbelievers. Don't you know that there's a lot of people that are walking around here today still don't believe in God nor believe in his son? In this case, he's going to raise them up. He says, and those are the unbelievers, those who, who have not received Jesus Christ as Savior. Come on, y'all. Don't we want everybody? Come on, join us. Christ is God's son, and he can save us. Uh, those are the ones who, who have done evil. Look, not but out, because, you know, some people that do evil do some pretty good works and some great things, but guess what? That will not save them. But the choice they made that they did not believe in God, they, they didn't trust Christ for their salvation. And those are the ones that's going to be condemned. Even Satan and all his little imps, they're going to be put in the fire, in the lake of fire, and they will see torture and punishment throughout eternity, whereas those of us that believe and receive Jesus Christ, you all, we're going to have a great time. We are going to be living with the Lord, and we are going to, he's going to make us a new heaven and a new earth, and we're coming back, and we're going to live with him forever. And this is what Jesus Christ was trying to explain to these Jewish leaders, that he wasn't, he didn't come here to become their ruler over them. He came because he had to do the work that the Lord had set out for him to do. And that was to try to convince people to turn from their evil ways and to follow him so that we could all live in eternity with him. Amen. I pray and hope. Hello, Sister Green, that something was said. Jackie Smith, good to see you, Sister Ridgeway, that will help you to understand that this work that Jesus was doing for his father, guess what? We've got work to do also. We've got to tell this dying world that yes, Jesus saves. Yes, God loves us and he loved his son. And guess what? We are to love them both and rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what happens, God is still on the throne. Jesus is sitting there still uh, covering for us. So as I said, I pray and hope that this lesson will help you to understand about doing the Father's work. And until the next time, may God bless and keep you all, and we'll see you. Oh yeah, and go to church somewhere. Go worship with other people and share this lesson with those that you come across. Amen and good night.